our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here at the CUBE studios in Palo Alto for a special CUBE Conversation, talking security, talking about the internet and cloud computing. Martin Bossart is the CEO of Open Systems. Martin, great to see you. Last time we chatted was in December. You were in Vegas. We had a little on the ground. Great to meet your team. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you so much. It's great, great to be here. Thank so you. exciting things going on. I want to get a state of the um, open systems in the industry. Obviously security is really a big, big thing. A lot of stuff going on in the industry. Black Hat, DEF CON, uh, Amazon had a big event called Reinforce, which is really kind of the first cloud security show, which brings the whole, your kind of value proposition to the table. But you guys have a new office here uh, in Silicon Valley. I saw a video on the internet trending. Yeah. Pretty nice place to work. Give, a, give us the update on the current office and Silicon Valley presence. Yeah, we are, you know, we are really happy to be, to be now uh, here in the US headquarters in, in Redwood City in Silicon Valley. So this really helps us also to, to be closer to, to the talents, to be closer to, to all the going to market activities and also to understand the market uh, better. So, so it's really exciting to be here and uh, obviously also our I mean, the, the people love to, to work to work here in Silicon Valley. Weather is always great. Yeah, yeah, weather's well, always <laughs> great. And the office has got that uh, good good working vibe there. Take a minute to explain Open Systems real quick for the folks not familiar with the videos we did in last December uh, in Vegas with your team. Talk about what your company's value proposition is and some of the growth you're experiencing. Right, so uh, Open Systems really uh, is, is uh, you know, we, we operate SD-WAN in a secure way for, for our customers, so it's really a, focusing on, on making a relatively complicated technology from operational point of view very easy to consume for our customers. So this is, I think, something we started uh, more than 15 years ago in Europe and I would say Open Systems is very much comparable, or at least the going to market part is very much comparable to an organic farm. So we have, we have a, a wonderful ecosystems in, in Switzerland, especially in the financial services industry and, and uh, our customers just love the way we provided those services and told their their uh, neighbors and friends, and this is really how we grew uh, on a global scale. Currently, Open Systems is operating in more than 180 countries, uh, SDUN and, and security infrastructure for customers, and we protect approximately 2.5 to 3 million end users globally. And when we when we started to to enter the U.S. market, uh, we, we learned that th the way we provide sd -WAN in a secure way really resonates a lot with, with the U.S. market because we, we can make uh, uh, complex infrastructure, especially uh, uh, projects with going to the cloud, very easy to consume for, for our customers. So we are really exciting on, on the growth side right now. Uh, we, we grow super fast in, in the U.S. We, we have been very successful in, in uh, 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 latest uh, 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 Customers, we 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 won uh, Kemmers, we won uh, Kemet. Uh, and so you're winning a lot of business. We are winning a lot of business, and and what's exciting about it is th th those customers give us really very valuable feedback on on the difference how we mm -hmm. how we how we provide that service is is, is really exciting. For you know, Martin, I was I was observing and I and talking to your team in December when we first met you guys for the first time, I'll, and you just briefly touched on it on your description of the of the company's success. A lot of the early success and continued success has been word of mouth, right? Um, with the organic, not like big marketing splash in the pool, kind of like you know banging the banging the drum hard. Although you're doing some marketing now, but in, and being in the U.S., that word of mouth has been really a testament to the quality of the product. So I got to ask you, what are they happy about? What's the problem that you're solving? What's the big buzz? What? Are, why are they so excited to share um, to their peers and colleagues yeah. about open systems? What's the big no, th Revelation. Yeah, thank you for, for the question. I think you know everybody goes to the cloud and what you really need is an SD-WAN to, to, to access the cloud. What that also means for, for all those companies, they have to rethink their security posture. So if you add now all those products and then you, you try to operate those, those products, it, it turns out it's relatively complicated compared to an old school MPLS network uh, we, we used to operate in the past. So, so this is really where Open Systems comes in and, and helps customers to operate that in a very easy way. So we integrate all those products needed to operate the global SD-WAN in, in a secure way on a single delivery platform and, and that allows customers to consume uh, that entire suite in a very, very easy way. 
I want to get your vision on the future of open systems. Um, I know you guys call it secure SD-WAN. I'm a little bit more radical and controversial in the sense that I think SD-WAN is kind of passe term. I think it's really cloud connectivity, work anywhere, people working at home more than ever. Uh, cloud computing has brought in essentially enterprise cloud, we're calling it cloud 2.0, where it's not just public cloud and having workloads in there taking advantage of the greatness of cloud 1.0. It's enterprises, it's hybrid, it's multi-cloud. You're seeing a really a distributed computing, a networking problem and a security problem being at the center of this new work environment. Yeah. Essentially, people connected to something. Right. I mean, it's cloud, right? I mean, that's it. called SD-WAN because it used to be an office, campus, remote office, very static, yeah, it's dynamic. Uh, What's you're your vision? You're absolutely right. I mean, this is really very, very old goes. Uh, let's say a network was, was a network and it was very clear what the network does. Right now, it's, it's more like we want to just connect users to cloud services. And it's not so clear where, where those services are coming from and it's not so clear where those users are sitting, where you consume from. And it, it results in a, in a, in a phenomenal uh, opportunity to be much more agile, much more, much faster also to, to, to set up new services. But it also is a challenge for, for IT operations because you, know, you might have a group of, of users saying, well, this and this service doesn't work well. And now you have to debug. Why, why is it not performing? Why, why is in Germany maybe a service coming from the U.S. not performing well? And uh, or, or you have you have an IoT device suddenly not not really uh, collecting data in a, in the right way. And and this is really where 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 SD WAN becomes an orchestration layer. Uh, SD WAN really helps you to orchestrate all those services and make sure you have the SLA available at all times everywhere and also understand if, if it's not, not delivering right. And this is really where, where I believe, uh, uh, yeah, you, you, we need new solutions to, to make these easy because You know, a lot of companies talk about digital transformation, that becomes the, 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 right. you know, the office, you know, the, the top CEO board conversation, let's transform, be digital. But the underlying infrastructure, which is very complex, we talk about distributed computing, you got networking, all these things in place, and old, new, all kind of mashed together with cloud. You, it's easy to say digital transformation, but you're talking about digital transformation of the business on top of existing complex hardware, which comes down to networking, moving packets from A to B, storing it on drives, and, and now you have people working at home, so you have people working globally. Right. It's not that simple. No. Right. It's it, complicated. It is it's really It's not just a U.S. problem. It's like I have a team in, uh, an engineering team in the U.K., in Germany, wherever, business. So it's a global problem. Exactly. And 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 also it's 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 about you know how do how do you process all the data in an efficient way? And and where we see a lot of uh, innovation power released is right now in the cloud. It's it's really exciting how how easy it gets to to consume all that computing power out of the cloud, but you need to, to make sure it, it is available uh, and, and you need to understand uh, w what is happening if it's not available and how, how to fix that. And this is really where, where uh, I think networking became more, more demanding, more challenging, but also obviously offers a tremendous uh, opportunity for innovation. And I think the security um, industry has got much broader scope to it. It used to be hey, you know, I'm a nerd, I'm black hat, I'm a, I'm a blue team, red team, we'll ma secure the environment, you got a perimeter, and okay, that's gone, we'll take care of threats, uh, malware, all this stuff's going on, but when you think about like um, cloud 2.0, cloud 1.0 is compute storage, great right. applications can load up on the cloud, all this great stuff's happening, Ray, yeah, rah, rah. Now, cloud 2.0 is networking and security. Right. Independent of everything, right? So, what's your take on that? How is open systems, you know, helping companies and what do you say to your customers when you say, hey, you know, compute networking, the storage is good, your cloud on premise, no problem, there's operating models for that, but you got networking and you got security to deal with on top of all the complexity. What's your story? I think, I think the, the most important thing is, you know, we have to live with the fact that some, some devices, some tools are not secure. So I think IoT is a very good example. If you want to, if you want to have all those sensors out there and and be close to the customer, be close to some some business processes, you need IoT. But it's 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 just not possible to have these very cheap devices built in a secure way. So it's a lot about how do do you design a network to to design it in a resilient, secure way, and that means that you have to think in zones, you have to think in, in compartments, and that makes it relatively easy 
secure again, but it is from operational point of view quite a challenge because you, you do not operate anymore one network, you suddenly operate maybe any network. On that point, just to kind of wrap up here, the security challenges around IoT, machine learning, and AI, which is clearly becoming part of the fabric of how companies are going to leverage that. Right. What are some of the big challenges that companies are having and what do you do to solve them? Uh, you know, in the old, old network, uh, um, world, you, you had a network where everything was connected uh, on, based on, on, on one network. So when, when you introduce SD-WAN and you, you introduce all these capabilities, it is very dangerous if you think just in the old school of one network because suddenly you have IoT working on the same network as, as maybe your, your finance department or you have productivity facilities working on the same network as your finance department. So it just doesn't make sense to, to have those very different functionalities on exactly the same network. Because if you have a compromise situation, you suddenly have your entire company compromised. And this is really where compartments become very, very important. I think this is also something you see in every industry, historically as well, that security and safety uh, starts also with compartments. So if, if you think fire, uh, fire security, it has a lot to do with, with fire compartments. That in case you have a fire, you don't lose the entire building. Or the same goes with ship building. I mean, Titanic was the last very big ship that was that sunk. Uh, but the reason was the compartments haven't been pressurized. A modern ship doesn't sink anymore. Uh, and I think this is really what we have to, to do now also in, in IT. We have to think in compartments. We have to think in, in layers. And that's easy to do with SD-WAN, but it's not so easy to operate. Final question for you real quick. You know, people talk about hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, that's the big conversation in this cloud 2.0. But you guys as being successful in outside the United States and now in the US, there's also a multi-geo right. work environment. Right. What should people think about when they kind of want to frame that uh, de debate or conversation? I'm a multinational, I'm operating in the US. Now I have regions, clouds have regions. There's also all kinds of now regulatory pressure coming across those areas. I, I, would, I would say around 2000 companies really started to globalize their value chains. You know, in, in the past maybe you had a pr production facility in one, in one country and then you sold your products globally. But uh, if you want to be competitive, you have to globalize your value chain. So it doesn't make sense to produce everything in one place. So you, your product usually, or your service is produced on a global scale. And that means that the networks also have to help you to, 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 to really produce that global value chain. But it means also that you are operate, operating in different uh, jurisdictions, in different uh, uh, regions, and you have to respect those different uh, regulations and, and laws. And this is, this is obviously then also a challenge for, for, for network operators because privacy in, in Germany is different than privacy in, in the US. Access rights are different. China is again very different. With all those multinationals, we operate in all those countries and we have to respect the, uh, the local law. And provide the security they need exactly. to do that. Martin, thanks for coming in and sharing your insights. Appreciate it. Great to see you. We'll follow up with, and keep track of the progress. Thanks for coming in. Th thank it. you so much. Okay, thank I'm you John so Furrier here for CUBE Conversations in Palo Alto at the CUBE Studios. Thanks for watching.